Well, hello, Quailwood Cougars. Welcome back. I'm going to be reading BFG chapter, there's no chapter numbers. This is called The Great Plan. But first, I have a trivia. No, it's not really a trivia question. It's a fun fact. Fun fact. Did you know that kangaroos cannot jump or walk backwards? I did not either. So I learned that today, which is proof that you are always learning. Okay, so a quick review on dreams, which was the chapter before. That was when the BFG was letting Sophie read the labels of all the dreams, and he, she was very, very interested and read all kinds of interesting dreams. And this one is called The Great Plan. So let's find out what's gonna happen. We've, oh, and right at the very end, the other giants were going off to eat little kids in England. So. Okay, let's find out. We've absolutely got to stop them, Sophie cried. Put me back in your pocket quick and we'll chase after them and warn everyone in England they're coming. Ridiculous and impossible, the BFG said. They is going two times as fast as me and they is finishing their guzzle before we is halfway. But we can't just sit here and do nothing, Sophie cried. How many girls and boys are they going to eat tonight? Many, the BFG said. The flesh lump eating giant alone has a most squawkling wopsy appetite. Will he snatch them out of their beds while they're sleeping? Like peas out of a puddle, the BFG said. I can't bear to think of it, Sophie cried. Then don't, the BFG said. For years and years, I is sitting here on this very rock every night after night when they is galloping away and I is feeling so sad for all the human beings they is going to gobble up, but I has had to get used to it. There is nothing I can do. If I wasn't a titchy little runty giant, only 24 feet high, then I would be stopping them. But that is absolutely out of the window. Do you always know where they're going? Sophie asked. Always, the BFG said. Every night they is yelling at me as they go boodling past. The other day they was yelling, we is off to Mississippi and Missouri to guzzle them both. Disgusting, Sophie said. I hate them. She and the big friendly giant sat quietly side by side on the blue rock in the gathering dusk. Sophie had never felt so helpless in her life. After a while, she stood up and cried out, I can't stand it. Just think of those poor girls and boys who were going to be eaten alive in a few hours. We can't just sit here and do nothing. We've got to go after those brutes. No, the BFG said. We must, Sophie cried. Why won't you go? The BFG sighed and shook his head firmly. I has told you five or six times, he said, and the third will be the last. I is never showing myself to human beings. Why ever not? If I do, they will be putting me in the zoo and with all the jiggy raffles and catty pillars. Nonsense, Sophie said. And they will be sending you straight back to a orphanage, the BFG went on. Grown up human beings is not famous for their kindnesses. They is all squiffle rotters and Greek sludgers. That simply isn't true, Sophie cried angrily. Some of them are very kind indeed. Who, the BFG said. Name one. The, the Queen of England, Sophie said. You can't call her a squiffle rotter or a Greek sludger. Well, the BFG said. You can't call her a squeak pip or a not mucher either, Sophie said, getting angrier and angrier. The flesh lump eater is longing dearly to guzzle her up, the BFG said, smiling a little now. Who, the Queen, Sophie cried aghast. Yes, the BFG answered. Flesh Lump Eater says he is never eating a queen and he thinks perhaps she has an especially scrumdiddlyumptious flavor. How dare he, cried Sophie. But Flesh Lump Eater says there is too many soldiers around her palace and he doesn't try it. He'd better not, Sophie said. He is also saying he would like very much to guzzle one of the soldiers in his pretty red suit but he is worried about those black furry, those big black furry hats they is wearing. He thinks they might be sticking in his throat. I hope he chokes, Sophie said. 
Flesh Thwump Beater is a very careful giant, the BFG said. Sophie was silent for a few moments. Then suddenly, in a voice filled with excitement, she cried out, I've got it! By golly, I think I've got it! Got what? the BFG asked. The answer, Sophie cried, will go to the queen. It's a terrific idea. If I went and told the queen about those disgusting man-eating giants, I'm sure she'd do something about it. The BFG looked down at her sadly and shook his head. She is never believing you, he said. Never in a month of Mondays. I think she would. Never, the BFG said. It is sounding such a wonky tale story. The queen will be laughing and saying, what awful rub squash. She would not. Of course she would, the BFG said. I have told you before that human beings is simply not believing in giants. Well, then it's up to us to find a way of making her believe in them, Sophie said. And how is she getting in to see the queen anyway? The BFG asked. Now hold on a sec, Sophie said. Just you hold on a sec because I've got another idea. Your ideas is full of crud swoggle, the BFG said. Not this one, Sophie said. You say that if we tell the queen, she would never believe us. I is certain she wouldn't, the BFG said. But we aren't going to tell her, Sophie said excitedly. We don't have to tell her. We'll make her dream it. That is even a more frog-bumpling suggestion, the BFG said. Dreams is lots of fun, but nobody is believing in dreams either. You is only believing in a dream while you is actually dreaming it. But as soon as you is waking up, you is saying, oh, thank goodness, it was only a dream. Don't you worry about that part of it, Sophie said. I can fix that. Never can you fix it, the BFG said. I can, I swear I can. But first of all, let me ask you a very important question. Here it is. Can you make a person dream absolutely anything in the world? Anything you like, the BFG said proudly. If I said I wanted to dream that I was flying in a bathtub with silver wings, could you make me dream it? I could, the BFG said. But how, Sophie said. You obviously don't have exactly that dream in your collection. I do not, the BFG said, but I could soon be mixing it up. How could you mix it up? It is like a bit of making a cake, the BFG said. If you is putting the right amounts of all the different things into it, you is making the cake come out any way you want. Sugary, spongy, curranty, Christmassy, or grob switchy. It is the same with dreams. Go on, Sophie said. I have dillions of dreams on my shelves, left or right. Right, Sophie said. I has dreams about bathtubs, lots of them. I has dreams about silver wings. I has dreams about flying. So all I has to do is mix these dreams together in the proper way and I is very quickly making a dream where you is flying in a bathtub with silver wings. I see what you mean, Sophie said, but I didn't know you could mix one dream with another. Dreams like being mixed, the BFG answered. They is getting very lonesome all by themselves in those glassy bottles. Right, Sophie said. Now then, do you have dreams about the Queen of England? Lots of them, the BFG said. And about giants? Of course, the BFG said. And about giants eating people? Swiggles of them, the BFG said. And about little girls like me? Those is the commonest of all, the BFG said. I has bottles and bottles of dreams about girls. And you could mix them all up just as I want you to, Sophie asked, getting more and more excited. Of course, the BFG said, but how is this helping us? I think you is barking up the wrong dog. <laughs> Do you know what the saying really is? Barking up the wrong tree. I love the BFG. Now hold on, Sophie said, listen carefully. I want you to mix a dream which you will blow into the Queen of England's bedroom when she is asleep, and this is how it will go. Now hang on a midget, the BFG said. How is I possibly going to get near enough to the Queen of England's bedroom to blow in my dream? You is talking dumb silly. I'll tell you that later, Sophie said. 
For the moment, please listen carefully. Here is the dream I want you to mix. Are you paying attention? Very close, the BFG said. I want the queen to dream that nine disgusting giants, each one about 50 feet tall, are galloping to England in the night. She must dream their names as well. What are their names again? Flesh lump eater, the BFG said. Man hunger, bone cruncher, child chewer, meat dripper, gizzard gulper, maid masher, blood bottler, and the butcher boy. Let her dream all those names, Sophie said, and let her dream that they will be creeping into England in the depths of the witching hour and snatching little boys and girls from their beds. Let her dream that they will be reaching into the bedroom windows and pulling the little boys and girls out of their beds and then, Sophie paused. Do they eat them on the spot or do they carry them away first? She asked. They is usually just popping them straight into their mouths like popcorn, the BFG said. Put that in your dream, Sophie said. And then, then the dream must say that when their tummies are full, they will go galloping back to giant country where no one can find them. Is that all, the BFG said? Certainly not, Sophie said. You must then explain to the queen in her dream that there is a big friendly giant who can tell her where all those beasts are living so that she can send her soldiers and armies to capture them once and for all. And now let her dream one last and very important thing. Let her dream that there is a little girl called Sophie sitting on her windowsill who will tell her where the BFG or the big friendly giant is hiding. Where is he hiding? The BFG said. We'll come to that later, Sophie said. So the queen dreams her dream, right? Right, the BFG said. Then she wakes up and the first thing she thinks is, oh, what a horrid dream. I'm so glad it was only a dream. And then she looks up from her pillow and what does she see? What does she see? The BFG said. She sees a little girl called Sophie sitting on her windowsill, right? Right there in real life before her very eyes. How is you going to be sitting on the queen's windowsill, may I beg? The BFG said. You are going to put me there, Sophie said. And that's the lovely part about it. If someone dreams that there is a little girl sitting on her windowsill and then she wakes up and sees that little girl really sitting there, that is a dream come true. Is it not? I is beginning to see where you is driving to, the BFG said. If the queen is knowing that part of her dream is true, then perhaps she is believing, believing the rest of it is true as well. That's about it, Sophie said. But I shall have to convince her of that myself. You said you was wanting the dream to say there is a big friendly giant who is also going to talk to the queen. Absolutely, Sophie said, you must. You're the only one who can tell her where to find the other giants. How is I meeting the queen? Asked the BFG. I is not wanting to be shooted at by her, her soldiers. The soldiers are only in the front of the palace, Sophie said. At the back, there is a huge garden and there are no soldiers in there at all. There is a very high wall with spikes on it around the garden to stop people climbing in, but you could simply walk over that. How is you knowing all about this queen's palace? The BFG asked. Last year, I was in a different orphanage, Sophie said. It was in London, and we used to go for walks all around there. Is you helping me to find this, this palace? The BFG asked. I has never dared to go hide and sneaking around London in my life. I'll show you the way, Sophie said confidently. I is frightened of London, the BFG said. Don't be. Sophie said. It's full of tiny dark streets and there are very few people about in the witching hour. The BFG picked Sophie up between one finger and a thumb and placed her gently on the palm of the other hand. Is the Queen's Palace very big? He asked. Huge, Sophie said. There's a picture of him picking her up. And I think I missed a picture a couple of pages ago. Yes, so this is Sophie and the, and the BFG just talking. Let's see. Then, how is we finding the right bedroom? Well, that's up to you, Sophie said. You're supposed to be an expert at that sort of thing. 
and you is absolutely sure the queen will not put me in a zoo with all the catty piddlers. Of course she won't, Sophie said. You'll be a hero, and you'll never have to eat snaz cumbers again. Sophie saw the BFG's eyes widen. He licked his lips. You mean it, he said. You really mean it? No more disgusted snaz cumbers? You couldn't get one if you wanted to, Sophie said. Humans don't grow them. That did it. The BFG got to his feet. When is you want me, wanting me to mix this special dream, he asked. Now, Sophie said, at once. When is we going to see the queen, he said. Tonight, Sophie said, as soon as you've mixed the dream. Tonight, the BFG cried. Why such a flash bunking flurry? If we can't save tonight's children, we can anyway save tomorrow's, Sophie said. What is more, I'm getting famished. I haven't had a thing to eat for 24 hours. Then we had better get crackling, the BFG said, moving back towards the cave. Sophie kissed him on the tip of his thumb. I knew you'd do it, she said. Come on, let's hurry. Wow, that's a good plan. I think that's a really good plan. But I was thinking, I mean, what if the queen just saw the BFG? Wouldn't she believe there were giants that way? But I guess this is probably a better idea because... How would the BFG convince the other queen and all the soldiers that there are nine other giants out there? So I guess Sophie's plan is better than mine. Okay, we'll tune in tomorrow. The next chapter is called Mixing the Dream. That should be really good.